Look at that. That's pretty. So what's up with this heat ring? That's pretty heavy. have a mark on it. Look at these swirl marks. Don't recognize the handle. Very distinctive. My guess is this is an Asian pan. It does appear to be some kind of marking, but I can't see it. Alright, so let's talk about today's pickup. Went to the thrift store, and I got this. Um, probably by social media standards, I paid too much for it. It was $12.99 right there. Um, but I was intrigued by this pan, and I wanted to get a closer look at it. Um, as you can probably tell, it's a lodge. It has all the characteristics of a lodge. But it's really nice and smooth inside, and this is not a modern machine-made pan. Um, it has Made in USA on it. It looks like it's got a kind of a heat ring, though. This is what's really kind of throwing me off. I mean, it is kind of flat, but it's got this ring around it. And I'm not, I, if I recall, I don't remember seeing lodges that had this ring like that. But it also says Made in USA D, and there's an 8SK. So we know it's a lodge because of that. You can, I don't know if you can, how easily you can see it. And it's a late production lodge um, because it has the Made in USA. But it's not so late that it would be considered modern. And it looks pretty darn old. It's got a reasonable amount of wear on it. It looks like it might sit pretty flat too. Um, but I was intrigued because I... Um, usually these would be three notches, right? But the ring is almost kind of missing. And it's almost like it's completely worn down. This would be normally a three notch lodge. Let me see if I've got one here that I can... So here's a, uh, here's a three notch lodge, number eight, just like this one. Even the same mold number D. But you can see how defined the heat ring is whereas on this one it's almost like you think it was ground down like they they it was to, to use on a, a, I don't know it's very odd um, but I'm not used to seeing these without a, def, a clear heat ring so it looks like there was a heat ring maybe it was ground down maybe this pan has been modified this is what normally what you expect. 8SK, 8SK, um, handles and everything seem to match. So did somebody grind down the heat ring? Hmm. But there doesn't appear to be any indication that anything else is ground down. There's, there's no markings on this. I guess I need to throw this in the E-Tank and take a look at it. Obviously, even in fully restored condition, it's probably not worth much more than what I paid for it. But um, this is a, a research learning experience for me too. And anything under 20 bucks, if it's if it's interesting, I I may go for it just so that I can gather information. I'm photographing, and I'm, of course, I'm sharing with all y'all. And I don't know. This was an odd one. I haven't seen that before. Oh, let me show you what else I got. This is not cast iron, but I really couldn't pass this up for uh, 10 bucks. A pizza stone, I, I, I have a pizza stone and I like pizza stones, but I've not seen one that's glazed like this. Um, I really do want to get a cast iron pizza stone and compare the difference, but there's no doubt no cast iron is going to be as smooth as this. So this is pretty neat. 
Um, I love using pizza stones. Um, I don't know if cast iron is going to work better, but check this out. I paid 10 bucks for this, and this is made in France. So this is not uh, a cheapy thing. This is a uh, Emile Henry. So I think this is a pretty pretty good deal for 10 bucks. Here's, um, here's one that I'm just working on that I didn't get a chance to do it before of, so let me do it before right now. This is a really nice Griswold griddle. And it's only been in there maybe 20 minutes, and look at, look at how the crud is already starting to come off. In fact, let me, let me disconnect this thing and scrub it because I could probably get all this crud off. You can see it just was baked in. There it is. It is it's amazing how well this E-Tank works. So, let's just see if it's just starting to come off. Yeah, it's starting to peel off little by little, but that old seasoning, that'll come off pretty darn easily with the E-Tag. Look at that. That's pretty. Just have caked on stuff on it too. So this is going to come along nicely, I think. So now that I'm uh, doing a, fiddling with a lot of cast iron, I have a bunch of friends that have been bringing stuff over for me to restore. And uh, this is my sweetie's pan that she thinks she found in her house. Found two of these pans and didn't realize that they fit together like this. I don't know much about Volrath. This is the first time I've actually encountered one in the wild. Um, but. I'm told that's what these are, the Volrath pans. It's an unmarked Volrath, although maybe it'll be marked. I don't know. There's definitely some weird damage on, the, on some stuff, but we're gonna restore these things. And I think this is what they call a combo kit, where you've got a lid that also functions as a pan. And I'm gonna throw this in the E-Tank and bring these guys back to life too. Okay, so here's my E-Tank and here is the pan in question. I use this stainless steel cable and I'll just uh, I'll string it through the handle. Like that. I think it gets a nice good connection on it. Drop this down in here. Just like that. And this is the anode or the cathode. And I'll just check to make sure the pan is oriented and it's not touching anything. And then right down here is my power supply, so I'll flip that on. And I'm doing about 6.4 volts at 3.1 amps. I'll cover this just in case it rains, so any rain blowing in won't get on it. And so there we go. I'll just leave that cooking in the uh, e-tank for a little bit. So I've got another one in the oven here. Let's take a quick look at it. I want to kind of just take a quick look, see if anything's spotting on it right now. That's pretty good. I will 
we'll just lightly go over it a little bit just to make sure there's no oh, this is a, the first coat we really want to be pretty thin so that's the plan Let's take a look at this, see what we got. So what we want to see is what's up with this heat ring. It appears like it was ground down. All right, so now clearing this off, we can see clearly the heat ring was ground down. Why did somebody do this? I don't know why. Very interesting. Obviously done quite a long time ago. But, yeah, look at that. Somebody ground down the heat ring. I guess if you want a vintage lodge and want to use it on, say, a, a flat top stove or a induction, this would probably work better than a traditional one with a heat ring. More cleaned, where you can see it. Clearly, they ground this thing down. But here's the thing. It sits pretty flat. It doesn't spin. You know, it's it's relatively whoever ground it down did a pretty good job. And it's it's very nice and smooth on the inside. The wire brush made a few marks, but those will come out. So it it's pretty interesting. Very odd. So another weird thrift store find. Not sure what to do with it, so we'll see. All right, welcome to the first annual, maybe semi-annual, quarterly um, cast iron way off. So there's been some questions floating around about the various weights of different um, cast iron pans, so I thought, hey, Let's weigh some stuff and see what happens with the different uh, weights. Now, I, my collection here is pretty limited, so I don't have a ton of stuff. I have enough to be able to compare some things, but I can't really compare across the board. So I will definitely be doing another one in the future where I have like all a wider array of one particular size. So let's start off with what I've got the most of, which are these number five pans. And I've got number fives of BSR, both Red Mountain as well as Century Series. I've also got a number five three-notch lodge here and another number five three-notch lodge. So I have two BSRs and I have two three-notch lodges at number five. We'll compare those. I've also got some number threes and stuff. So let's, uh, let's start with my number threes. So here's what I've got. I have three number threes with me right here. One of them is a Griswold number three. Guess that's a small block logo. I'm not sure, but we'll start with the way of that. And that's 1.52 pounds, right? So Griswold is at 1.52 pounds. Here's a favorite Pika wear, the Smiley logo number three. 1.3 pounds. Definitely a lot lighter, and you can tell 1.52, 1.37. So, favorite is even lighter than Griswold. Now, here is an unmarked Wagner number three. Let's see what that weighs at 1.78. So, almost two tenths a pound difference between 
each of these three. Quite a, quite a noticeable difference. So if you're looking for the lightest in number threes, based on what I have, the favorite's going to be the, the lighter one. I wish I had a, um, some lodges to compare to, but I don't have any number three lodges with me right now. So, so let's move on to number fives. So I've got two BSRs and I have two lodges here. Now, let's start with the BSR Red Mountain early and all of these pans everything I'm doing I have stripped them completely down and uh, done three coats of seasoning on them or around three coats so they're all basically in the same seasoned thing there's no buildup or anything they're really nice condition so let's start off with the BSR that's 2.79 so 2.8 pounds for the Red Mountain number five now let's compare it to the Century Series number five 2.84 so the century is a little bit heavier than the red mountain right so now we're 2.84 2.8 uh, for the BSRs but I want to show you something I discovered here so we have two two lodges that are from relatively the same period this is an early three-notch lodge. You'll notice it doesn't have SK on it. It's it, 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 but it does have the three-notch. But these two pans are noticeably different. One of them is thinner than the other. It's pretty noticeable. Do you see that? So let's weigh the difference of them. So first off, let's try this this one. 2.85. It's a little bit heavier than the BSR Century, which was 2.84, I believe. 2.84, 2.85. So this notion that the BBSRs are heavier than the lodges is not played out by my data right here. Now, let's try this other three-notch lodge. 2.85, and this is 3.39, 3.4. Tremendous, tremendous difference. And if you look at the, the wall thickness, you can see it looks like, well, maybe okay so in the finishing of these pans there's a bigger lip on this one than there is on the other one it's almost like this may actually be some kind of an hybrid it almost feels more like an unmarked Wagner this might have been I don't know this wasn't during the time I think when Lodge was using Wagner's molds but it is definitely an unusual piece so they're comparable but there's quite a bit of variance there. Very interesting, right? So let's look at uh, some of the number eights that I have. Now, I have two number eight Wagner wares. I have one. These are both the same models. One of them has been cleaned and stripped and one of them has it. So let's see what the difference in the weight is between these two. So we'll start with the Wagner number eight. And that is 4.4 pounds, um, 4.48, roughly about 4.5 pounds. Now let's take the same pan unrestored with all of this gook on it, all the carbon. Let's see how much weight that adds. 4.43. So 4.43 versus 4.48. So in other words, all of this carbon buildup is not really adding to the weight. It's just there's a natural deviation of the weights of these things. This is, this is, these are both, I think they even have the same model number, although I wouldn't, can't tell because of the, it's obscured, but you, they're both had the Wagner Ware uh, Sydney O logos on them. So they're, they both look almost identical, but isn't that interesting? There's quite a bit of a variation in the weight between one's 4.4, 4.43, and 4.48. So the cleaner pan actually weighs four one hundredths of a pound heavier. Very interesting. All right, let's look at another number eight. This is a number eight three-notch log. So the Wagners are 4.4, 4.5 pounds. What is a three-notch lodge? 5.6. Number eight, enamel-coated. 5.6 pounds. 
do I have, and I don't have a number eight BSR to compare it to, unfortunately. Obviously significantly heavier than the Wagners. We kind of generally know that because the Wagners are a little bit thinner. Lodges are known as being like boat anchors. They're very heavy. Um, so that's a, that's quite a hefty pan, 5.6. So now, that's all I've got with eight, ironically, being the most common size. But let's look at number sevens. I do have some number sevens. So here is a, a BSR number seven century series. It's not been completely cleaned. I just got this recently and I haven't, uh, haven't put it in the E-tank. Let's throw this on number seven and see what it is. 4.99, so that's roughly five pounds. Let's compare it with a number seven Red Mountain. Same pan, earlier production. This, uh, 4.99, let's see what this one is. 4.47. Again, significant difference. Is it due to the carbon or is it simply due to the subtle differences in uh, these molds? Some of them had thicker produced thicker pans and heavier pans than others. I'm beginning to believe that uh, that there was quite a bit of variation in, in the different molds. So there you have it. Um, the only other thing I can show you that's out right now is this number 14 BSR. I don't have anything to compare it to, but if you've ever wondered what one of these monster uh, number 14 BSR Century Series pans weighs, Let's put it on the scale. Boink. 10.46 pounds. Quite heavy. So there you have it. Um, I need a larger sample size probably, and it would be nice to get some pans that were made with the same molds so I can compare them. But it looks like the variation in weight between the different pans of the same model the weight varies dramatically, and it can more than make up with for the difference, in some cases, between different brands. So, that's pretty heavy. All right, we're coming to an end of another episode, and I uh, thought I would pull out the mysterious hacked three-notch lodge. Here it is, all seasoned up and ready. Came out really nice. Unfortunately, look at it, it's been ground down. Somebody took a grinder to this thing and re removed the heat ring. You still parts of it, but it's been modified. So this is a late model um, three-notch lodge, probably post 65 or something like that. Um, and it's nice. It's relatively smooth inside. It's going to be a good user. And uh, I mean, if you wanted a three-notch lodge and you wanted to use it on an electric range or an induction stove, this is this is the perfect one for it. Um, uh, I, and you see, I got a little tag on it. Right now, the tag is uh, $25. Um, I'm going to try to... I'm, at some point, I'm going to set up a little booth somewhere um, and offer this. A, a bunch of friends and family and everybody have been wanting to get some cast iron. And just, I've been giving some stuff away, but I'm also going to... Try to find some place where I can sell some of these things and uh, pick up a little bit of extra money just to kind of make my hobby at least somewhat break even. It's unlikely that's going to happen because I pretty much, you know, when you factor in the time and everything, I mean, I paid, I think I paid what, like $13, $14 for this. And uh, it took quite a lot of time to clean up and then to season and all of that. I mean, so to, to make, you know, $10 profit on it is not, not really... You know, it's not really a, it's not a business, you know, um, but there you have it. Um, I'm working on more and more episodes. We've got all kinds of interesting stuff that's in the work, works that are going to be going off in different directions too. I got a really interesting trip coming up that I'm going to be doing in an episode. There's a, there's some neat things. I hope you guys will stick around. Be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back with you. And maybe I could do a show where I uh, answer anybody's questions. Or maybe um, I can ask you guys questions. How's that? <laughs> anyway, next time.